Wow, that was a nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, he's absolutely correct. Uh, we hear a little bit about solar renewable, and my goal today is to help everyone here understand just the basics. Don't worry. Just the basics today so that you can go away and have an informed conversation about solar and know a little bit about what you're talking about. Okay? So, my name is Sean Rowe, and I'm the founder of a solar information website called SROCO Solar. Uh, to be honest, I began the website for fun simply to record the knowledge that I had learned while taking solar classes in California. And my motivation was twofold. One, so that I could better understand by presenting it. And two, so that someone like my 60-year-old mother could understand. Okay? <laughs> my 60-year-old mother is intelligent, but she likes things simple. So the motivation for this site is to keep it as simple as possible. Okay? So today, I'm going to try and focus just on the basics. And also, after the talk, there will be a Q&A question. Feel free to write down any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Okay? <clears throat> so, what I'm going to talk about is the vocabulary, basic words that you can use when talking about solar. And while I'm explaining the vocabulary and what, I'm going to explain how it works. Very basically, how solar works. And then I'll end my talk very quickly with a few reasons why. And the main reasons being financial, saving money, and environmental. Though other people have given this part of the talk much better. Okay? So, walking around Korea, especially Gwangju and Jolado, surely you have seen solar panels and solar arrays. For example, this one on Joseon University's dorms. You guys have seen this, correct? Huge, beautiful solar array. Oh, in my opinion, beautiful. <laughs> okay. Uh, or have you ever visited uh, Namhae, the German village in Namhae, Dogilmol? There are tons of solar arrays, and I'll talk about what this is. This is a different type of solar. And solar arrays in the German village down in Namhae, okay, the German village. Interestingly, the country with the most solar installed, can you guess? Korea. Germany. <laughs> Seriously, Germany is the country with the most solar installed. And then Spain, Japan and America, and then a few others. But Germany, by far, has installed the most solar. Okay, so what is it? The most obvious part of solar array is the panel. Okay, this is the large panel. A solar array is made up of this. It's also called a module. This is more used in the professional field. You guys can just say solar panel. That's what most people say. A solar panel is made up of tiny little solar cells, usually from silicon. Don't worry about the silicon. Just know this is a solar panel. Okay? The solar panels are strung together into something called a string, and then the strings are wired together to make an array. This is called a solar array. So next time you're driving or walking around and you see some solar in the Guangzhou area, nudge your friend and say, oh, look at that beautiful solar array. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> okay? So solar array. This is what you can say, alright? <clears throat> now, the basic solar system consists of the array, the inverter, which I'll talk about later, and then the meter. What is the meter? You know every month you look at the meter? Yeah, sure. If you have an apartment or a house and you walk out, and you have to look at that box with the numbers, and you write it down for your electricity bill, what you're looking at, that's the meter. 
That's the meter. Okay. So basically, the sun shines down onto the solar panels. The solar panels magically create energy. Okay, not magically, but really they hit silicon. Silicon creates protons and electrons. The electrons turn into current, and current gets electricity. Huh? Just say it makes electricity. So the electricity goes down to the inverter. I'll talk about that later. The inverter goes to the meter, which you write your numbers down, and that meter is connected to two things, basically the house, your apartment, and the grid. The grid. I'll talk about this in a second. The grid is the utility grid. It is what your city or your country installed all over the place to make sure you can have electricity in all of the buildings. Okay? The grid is extremely important for our modern lives and the electricity that we consume and the energy that we use. Okay? So thank your country and thank your city for creating the grid so you can have electricity. <clears throat> then there's the BOS. The BOS means balance of system. Balance of system. It's really just the, the other things of a solar array, solar system. The wires, the metal poles that hold it up, okay, and the connector pieces. We just call that the balance of system. And then there are the loads. A load is anything that uses electricity. So probably in your apartment, a load would be your TV, the lights, your air conditioner, aircon, your kimchi nengjango. Okay, each of these are a load. They use electricity. Even when you plug in your cell phone charger to recharge your cell phone, it becomes a load. Have you ever wondered why does your cell phone charger have a fat part on it? What is this fat part? And your laptop cord? Your laptop cord has a fat part. Have you ever wondered why? Your lamp, your lamp doesn't have a fat part. Your TV doesn't have a fat part. Your kimchi nengtongo doesn't. Why do these have one? I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. But first, I have to tell you a little bit about ACDC. You guys know ACDC? Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to talk about the band. <laughs> but the rock band, ACDC, their logo, lightning bolt, electricity. You see the current, the electricity? ACDC is a rock band, but they know a little bit about what ACDC means. There's a really really interesting history of AC and DC. There are two types of electricity. There's a really interesting history with Thomas Edison and Westinghouse. And basically Thomas Edison wanted one. Westinghouse wanted the other. And Thomas Edison went around shocking and killing pigs and cows to prove that the other one was dangerous. Really interesting story. I'm not going to get into it, but you can read about AC, DC, Thomas Edison. Look it up on uh, the internet. <laughs> okay, so this is what you need to know about AC and DC. AC is the electricity in your house. Okay, AC. It's really easy to transmit or send over the wires. Okay, it stays really easy. AC. DC is really good for storage for your batteries, okay? So, a solar panel produces DC electricity, but your house uses AC. If you connect it to, it will explode. So you need to change. You need to change this DC current, direct current, into alternating. A, alternating current, okay? We need to change it, and the way that we change it is we invert 
we invert the direct current to the alternating current. And so solar systems, solar arrays, need an inverter. They need an inverter so that you can connect it to your house. And when you plug in your kitchen and jungle, you can have electricity that's useful. Now, DC is good for storage. Your house uses AC. Your cell phone, it works because it has a battery. The battery is storing the energy. Okay? So when you plug in your cell phone, it's coming out AC, and this little fat part converts, not in, but converts the AC to direct current so that it can be stored in your laptop. Hmm. Now you know why it has that little silly fat part on the charger. Okay? It needs to store the energy in DC. Okay? So solar panels create DC. Your house uses AC. <clears throat> All right. A few more vocabularies. Solar panels are measured in watts. Watts are a measurement of power. Okay? Um, and a solar panel, they come in all different sizes, from 5 watts to 450 watts. Okay, a 5 watt might, might be a small one, and a 450 watt will be as tall as me, and pretty wide. Okay. Now, in, on houses and the panels that I see around Korea, most of them are the average range, about 200 watts. Maybe 170, 180, maybe 210 or 220, but on average they'll probably be about 200 watt panels. Okay? Now, this is a watt. We measure a panel in watts. Okay? So if you want to buy solar panels, hey, I want a 200 watt panel. Oh, you're smart. You know what you're talking about. Okay? But the array, the whole system, on a building, that's usually measured in kilowatts. Kilo means thousand, so basically kilowatt is a thousand watts. Okay, so for example, a four kilowatt kW, a four kilowatt solar array will be about four thousand watt system. Okay, so four thousand watts probably 200 watt panels, how many solar panels are in a 4K system? 20, perfect. So if you see about 20 panels on a building, maybe Nonghyuk, or the new Seogu government building, beautiful solar array on Seogu, you can count the panels Multiply it by 200 and say, eh, divide by 1,000. Uh, it's about a 4 kilowatt system. It's about a 10K system. <laughs> How do you know that? GFC. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Uh, so we measured in kilowatts. Now, this is a laboratory measurement. It's done in a lab under standard test conditions your solar panel won't output exactly 200 watts if that's what it's rated. It'll output less due to many, many different things. And the way that we measure electricity on your meter, the number you write down, we measure that in kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours, KWH, kilowatt hours. This means how many kilowatts you're using in an hour. It's as simple as that. So these lights, they use a few watts of energy. And if you leave them on over time, that will add up to however many <coughs> kilowatts. And that will move the meter, and that will increase how much you pay each month. Okay. So when people say, turn off your lights, it's good for the environment. It's also good for your wallet. Okay, <laughs> we'll save you money. Uh, 
Now there are two types of solar, okay? The one that I specialize in is PV. This talk is called The Basics of Solar PV. What is PV? Of course I have to tell you. It's photovoltaics. Photovoltaics. Photo is not like a picture, a little bit related. Photons, the photons, okay? Sunlight has photons, and the photons are what hit the panels and create the electricity. And then voltaic, voltaic, voltage, voltage, volts, that's electricity. So basically, photon electricity, photovoltaics. So solar PV are like what you see on the Chosun University dorms. They create electricity, electricity, voltaics. But there's a different type of solar. Maybe you've seen this. It looks like this, and it has a huge cylinder or a tank at the top. This is solar, but it's a little different. It's not creating electricity. Hmm. This one is called solar thermal, and what it's doing, it is heating water. Water, okay? And this is using the sun, the heat and the energy from the sun, to basically heat water in these little dark tubes, okay? Dark colors uh, absorb heat better. That's why the street is so hot in the summer, because it's usually black asphalt. Uh, so it heats the water, and then they store the hot water in this big tank. And when you turn on the shower, <laughs> it pumps down into the house, and you have solar hot water. Solar hot water. It's a cheap way of getting hot water in your house. And it's a fantastic way uh, for Korea because in Korea, you, uh, the use of undo heating, undo heating, the floor heating, is so common in Korea. I'm originally from America, and floor heating is considered fancy or special. <laughs> Only the rich people have undol heating. Okay, most of it's central. Well, Korea is very smart. Undol heating is very common, and if it uses water, solar thermal is a great way to heat that water and warm your house. You don't have to pay the electric company. This will not increase your meter. Right? You're just getting it straight from the sun. The sun is free. The sun loves all of us. <laughs> okay? So solar PV, photovoltaics, create electricity, electricity for your house. Solar thermal, the one with the big fat tank on top, that's hot water. Just creates hot water. <clears throat> now, why would someone want to install solar? Why did the new... Togu building in Wangju. Why did they put in solar? Why did Nongkyo put in so, uh, solar on top of their bank? There's two main reasons, and the most popular, surprisingly, is to save money. Mm. Well, Sean, if it saved money, wouldn't everybody have solar all the time? Yeah, I want that. <laughs> It doesn't save money for everybody. Really, it depends on where you live and a few other things. I said that the country with the most solar is Germany. Germany? Not somewhere in Africa or Central America where there's lots of sun, sunshine, the desert all the time. Germany is not famous for its sun. It gets about as much sunshine as London. Really. Why would a place with not 
a lot of sun, why would they have so much solar? The reason is, Germany, the government, invested in solar. They provided government subsidies. They told their citizens, if you install solar, which can be expensive, we will pay you more money than what it's worth. And they said, really? That's easy. True story. In Germany, in the very beginning, they changed it now, but in the very beginning, people who own homes would rent their neighbor's roof. <laughs> Seriously. They would go to their neighbor, hey, you going to install solar? No, I don't think so. I don't speak German. They probably said it in German. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Can I have your roof? Huh? I will rent your roof. I'll give you $100 a month if I can use your roof. I'll put solar on there. And then the government paid this person 150 <laughs> So this person got $50 to pay the neighbor 100 They were renting neighbor's roofs. It's amazing. So naturally... The number of solar installations went up really fast. Everyone who could afford it was buying roofs everywhere. Uh, what happened, because the government invested in solar by providing tax rebates and certain incentives, what happened was solar companies moved to Germany or were created in Germany and now, 15 years later, 20 years later, the most popular solar panel companies come from Germany. A lot shot solar and a few other solar panel companies. Now they make them in Germany, ship them to America, ship them to France, ship them to Spain. And Germany was able to create a solar industry they have jobs, they have factories, they have high technology. They're really smart graduate students are working to try and make solar panels better and more efficient. They got a really good start. Um, <clears throat> Spain did a similar thing, and they're second in solar. And America's trying. We're trying to get involved uh, in solar. But America... You might say it's so big, I don't know, the politics. The good thing about America is we have state governments that have almost enough power, enough control. And so in America, California, the state government decided they wanted to invest in solar. And so the best solar companies in America are from California because California pays its homeowners tax rebates and incentives to install solar as well. So America, if you're familiar, and I'm sorry, I know we're in Korea, but if you're familiar with any of the states in America, California is the number one state with the most solar installations. California. Can you guess the second? Anything. Texas. Texas is sunny. Nope. Florida's very sunny. They call it Sunshine State. Nope. <laughs> Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> now you're going in the right direction. <laughs> New Jersey. Really? Really? <laughs> very good. She doesn't believe that. Nobody believes that. It's the same story as Germany. New Jersey is not known for its sunshine. I don't know what New Jersey is known for, to be honest with you. But it is the second state with the most solar installed. Same reason. The, the state invested in solar and decided to give subsidies to businesses and homeowners. And the number of installations went up. And that was the first step. And most governments, they have a tier system, which if you install first, you get lots of money. If you install second, you get a little bit less. If you're the 100,000th person to install, you only get a little bit. But that's okay, because
because when you start a new industry, it's expensive. <coughs> Solar is very expensive. But as the demand increases, the supply increases. As the supply increases, the price decreases. As the price decreases, the demand <laughs> increases. And you end up with an industry that can sustain itself without the government having to pay for it. Now, Korea is beginning to do that. Korea is very intelligent because, like we said, there's no oil in Korea, which I think is a blessing. That's a blessing, <laughs> not, not a problem. Uh, and Korea is testing solar and how it works in different areas. And uh, my good friend Warren, who gives tours for the GIC next week, Bo <laughs> Chang. Uh, I'm good friends with Warren, I've known him for many years, and he likes to drive around and explore Jolado, Jolanando, and he will point out, hey Sean, look at that village, tiny farming village in between maybe Naju and Guangzhou, solar panels everywhere. Solar thermal, solar PV, and I researched it a little bit, the Korean government said, we want to test how solar works, and they invested in these little villages, installed solar, and these poorer farming villages have what I call free electricity. So let me explain that for a minute. Free electricity, well, I put free in quotes because it's not really free. Of course you pay for it. But let me explain what I mean. <clears throat> you know, rent versus own. If you have a choice to buy your house or apartment or rent your house or apartment for the rest of your life, what do you think is best for your money? What would you do? Own it, of course. You want to own it. Yeah, you want to own your house. Okay? You just pay a little by little over 30 years, maybe. I don't know, America. 30 years. <laughs> it takes a long time. Uh, and then you own it, and you pay nothing. And you own a house, and it's an investment. Of course. Of course I don't want to rent it. How about your electricity? Wouldn't you want to own your electricity? <laughs> you rent it. Every month, you pay a renting fee to Kepco to rent electricity to power this projector, this camera, these lights, your laptop, your computer, your TV, your refrigerator, your air conditioning. And every month, you pay every month. Not if you own a solar system. You make your own energy. You own your energy. Huh? Yeah, of course. So, the trick with the electric companies, Kepco and the electric companies in America, this is a Korean bill right here. You can see this number, but you can't see it. I'll read it. 459 kWh kilowatt hours. Okay? This is uh, the usage. It was probably more in February. It was cold. Turned the heat up. And then went down in the summer. It's the same thing. Uh, they have tiers. Tier pricing. One, two, three, four, five. This is Korea. This is California. One, two, three, four, five. Tier pricing is how electric companies, this is how they make money. This is how they make money. Let me explain. The first tier, and this is Korea, it's the first 100 kilowatts is cheap. It's only 56.21. Uh, bullshit you point E1. <laughs> okay, I'll do English, sorry. 56.1. So your first 100 kilowatts, it's cheap, it's awesome. Basically the government says, everybody needs electricity. Everybody needs it. The farmers, the city people, the rich people, the poor people, you need a little bit of electricity for heat or your refrigerator. So the first 100 is cheap. The next hundred, twice as much. That's okay. We, we make a little bit of money. That's not much. Come on, come on. 
Back one? That's not much. Back ship one? <laughs> That's not much. The next hundred, two to three, getting a little bit more expensive. The next hundred, more expensive. And anything over 401 kilowatt hours, so if you use more electricity, you're paying a lot more for more. Think about it. If you buy one potato, let's say it costs, uh, apple, let's go apple. If you buy one tagua, it's about chana, one dollar. If you buy two, each chana. If you buy three, some chana. If you buy 30, it's not going to be some on lunch. It's going to be cheaper, right? Your electricity company does the opposite. <laughs> I'm serious. The first, the first electricity is a dollar. The second apple is two dollars, so now you pay three for two apples. Three apples, you pay five dollars. Four apples, you pay ten dollars. And if you buy ten apples, you pay thirty dollars. Not cheaper, it's even more. No, I don't believe you. Look at your bill. <laughs> Look at your bill and tell me if you don't see tier one, low price, tier two, higher price. <laughs> Basically, this is smart, it's okay. They're making money, but it's smart. If you leave your lights on and use lots of electricity, the government has to make the electricity. They have to make it. I'll explain that towards the end. How do they make it? So they have to create more, and if they create more, it costs them money, so they're going to charge you for it. Okay? So they love it when you waste electricity because... They're not just charging you for it, they're charging you more for it. So people who use a lot of electricity can actually save even more by going solar. Because the solar panels, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to take away this. The electricity the sun creates is going to take this. You might use the grid. You might use Korean Kepco energy, but you'll use less because most of it will come from the sun. And that sun is worth this, and you end up only paying this much for the little bits of electricity you have to use maybe at night. Oh. So it can save you money. <clears throat> Let's go through a very, very basic example. I'm sorry, it's in U.S. dollars. I hope you can convert. A basic, simple solar array system, including installation, maybe a three kilowatt system, in California, might cost uh, $20,000. Each on one. I think that's right. $20,000. Now, this might save you if you use lots of electricity, which in California... It might be hot if you don't live near the coast, so you have to use electricity, uh, air con, air conditioning. If you live in the um, north, it gets cold. You have to use the heater. These are the most expensive things. A small regular system, a good system, could save you a hundred dollars on your electric bill. <laughs> Let me go back real quick. This guy, I made a proposal for this guy. His Electric bill, one month in California, six hundred ninety dollars. You ship guman one, Honda one month. Chinsa, yeah, this guy used tons of electricity. <laughs> he's great for solar, okay, because he's going to save all of this money for the most expensive tier, okay. So let's say six hundred and ninety. Let's cut it down a hundred, okay. He saves a hundred dollars. Each month, 12 months, and he's saving about $1,200 a year, okay? Well, 20000 is the cost, divide by how much he saves per year, his payback might take about 16.7, which is 16 years and 8 months. Now, what that means is he owns his electricity, he's not renting it at least this much, the solar panels, sorry, the solar panels, 
how long your warranty? Your warranty. The warranty on this camera right here. What's the warranty? How long do you think it is? No, no, no. The camera. One year. Maybe a year, five years. How about your laptop computer? One year. One year. If you bought Apple Care, three years, right? Your cell phone, maybe one year. Okay. Solar panels are warranty, guaranteed by the maker, by the company, to last 25 years. This is true. 99% of solar panels have an automatic warranty for 25 years. They say it will produce at least, which means more than, 80% of its rated kilowatt hours. At least 80%, 25 years from now. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If it doesn't, put a new one on. No problem. Because we know it will. Amazing, huh? Yeah. So, this 16 years and 9 months, 8 months, wow, that's a long time. But your panel is guaranteed for 25 years. That means... In year 18, all of that electricity that you're getting is free. You paid for it. That Yi Chun Man Wan paid for it. You did not pay Kepco Yi Chun Man Wan. So now, in year 18, the electricity you use, that's money in your pocket. And oh, through the if somebody wants to move his home and then in that case he can he can sell the machine. It's a great question. Uh, we will take questions at the end, and I will answer all the questions. Okay? And the answer is, I didn't put this in here, but homes or buildings that have solar sell 17% faster for almost 20% more. You make money selling it. Your home, and a home exactly like it, but you have solar, yours will sell for more. And that, they did a study over all areas of homes with solar home you, you will get it back, yes. <laughs> People will pay a premium to have a house, and they know it's warranty for 25 years. You move out 10 years, you still got 15 years on the warranty. It doesn't stop. It's pretty impressive. So all that money is free. So you make about $1,200 a month, actually more. So by year 25, you've made... Chan Paul Man Wan. That's how much money. What would you do if you had an extra Chan Paul Man Wan 25 years from now? <coughs> Europe, <laughs> France, vacation. Okay? And this is why uh, solar is becoming more popular. The main reason, surprisingly, is money, financial. Okay? Uh, I used to work for a small solar company startup, and uh, people would call, hey, I want to know, I want to know, what is solar, how much? And we would always have to find out their motivation. Number one motivation, money. You thought the number one motivation would be environment, and that's what I'll talk about now. That is the second most popular reason people install solar. Okay, This is the... Al Gore, an inconvenient truth part of my talk. I'll go quickly because Al Gore did a much better job at uh, presenting the environmental reasons for renewable energy. But real quickly, coal, oil, and gas are the main sources of energy in most modern countries, particularly Korea and America, where I'm from. <clears throat> this is a duck after an oil spill. This is a factory. And this is the poster for Al Gore's movie, which if you want to know more about environmental reasons, I do recommend the movie. He says it a lot, much better. But I'll go through it. Here are the variations of Earth's surface temperature for the past 140 years, global, the world. The variations. Basically, it's going up. You've heard of global warming. Okay, the past thousand years. No, 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 it's a cyclical cycle, Sean. It's not human. It's, the Earth always does this. Okay, thousand years. Thousand years. Down here, boom. This is, this is 1950. 1950. 
It's getting a little bit higher. Okay. Global carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. I won't go into the details, but let's just say might, might be bad. We humans produce a lot of it. Could be bad for us. Not sure. Here's the global, the world carbon dioxide. 1750. Da, 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 da. Here's 1950, and it goes up. Basically, we're pumping a lot of carbon dioxide, a lot of greenhouse gas into, um, <coughs> into the air, into the atmosphere. Correlation, concentration of carbon dioxide. This is the blue one, carbon dioxide. Temperature, the temperature on Earth. It was up, it was high, it got cold. We got higher, 1950. Hmm, those lines are pretty close. I, I know about data analysis. Correlation does not mean causation. But this is a pretty convincing graph right here. Okay, carbon dioxide, the car, <coughs> the coal, the gasoline, and the temperature of Earth, they're both increasing pretty closely related. Now, where does our energy come from? I said the grid, the grid, all the electricity. Your government <coughs> is creating electricity so we can have lights. Thank you, government. It's great. This is the U.S. sources of energy. Uh, we get about half, 49% of our energy comes from coal. Okay, We're burning coal. It's cheap. That's why we do it. We get it, we dig it out of the ground, we burn it creates cheap, efficient energy. Nothing wrong with that. Well, there are lots of things wrong with that, but I'll explain in a little bit. We get about 20% from nuclear. <clears throat> nuclear is another topic. Natural gas, natural, it comes from the ground. Uh, hydroelectric, and then renewable, 2.4% in America. Most of that, probably 2%, wind. Barely 0.4 is solar. It's about 1% now, 2010, the numbers I saw. 2.4%, most of it's wind and even uh, bio-thermal uh, that comes from the ground. Here's Korea. Korea gets about a fourth of its energy from coal. Most of it's from petroleum. Petro. What do you put in your car? Oil, petro, gasoline. You use a lot to power the grid and you use a lot for your car. Uh, I did the conversion about a month ago. America right now is all complaining. Oh, gasoline. It's expensive. It's so bad. Obama, help. <laughs> Gasoline in America is about, on average, $3.30. Okay, Korea, won liters, gallons. Let me tell you. Went on a trip to Muju. I went snowboarding. Came back. Filled up the gas tank. I did the calculations. I did the conversions. U.S. dollars. Korea. U.S., U.S., $3.30. Korea, $6.70 per gallon. Per gallon. Gallon, gallon, dollars, dollars. A direct correlation. You pay almost twice as much. Twice as much. And you, there's plenty of drivers who drive. I told my friends in America, 3.30... Stop complaining. <laughs> 670 in Korea. Oh, I don't believe you. Yeah. yeah. Petrol is a major source of energy. You guys use natural gas and nuclear as well. In America, it's about almost 20%. In Korea, it's about 15% for nuclear. Okay, similar. Renewable, less than one. Less than one. Now, coal is good. Oil is good. Okay, okay, let's, let's pretend it's good. There's a key word here. There's a key word here. 
Breathable. I'm an English teacher. Let me help you. Able. Able. Able means can. Can. Breathe. Re means again. Right? It's a prefix. Again. New. New. Tarasel. Renewable. Can make new again. Can make new again. Less than 1%. Hmm. 99% you can not make new Again. Coal comes from the ground. Okay? Oil comes from the ground. It's good, it's cheap. Forget the environment. It's limited. It will run out. I don't know when. Come on. 50 years? 500 years? Doesn't matter. 1,000 years. Doesn't matter. Korea's been around for 5,000 years. Surely you've got another 5,000. And very likely, 99% of the things that run these lights, and this camera, and this projector, and your cell phone, will be gone. Will be gone. You have... We love energy. Nothing wrong with energy. Let's use energy. Let's turn the lights on. I love energy. I'm not saying don't use energy. I don't want to be a hippie and go back to the woods. Okay? Use energy. We need it. Let's, let's go. Let's do it. But we need something to supply what we use. And 99% of what we use now will be gone eventually. At some time. We don't know when. So my goal is to try and get people to... Now, invest in, understand this talk, understand a little bit, so that we can start to increase this 1% and this tiny 2% in big countries to lead the way. Renewable wind and solar, I think these are what we need to do. This is the way we need to go. Why not start now? Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy the talk.